Uh, boy, it has been a wet old day over much of the country. In the Bay of Plenty, the rain was forecast. The Met Service had said it, w it would be bad. And Edgecombe has had serious flooding before, but when the water came, it did so, so very fast that even a town that had been warned and knew what it could be like was caught out by the speed of the water and by how very much of it there was. Somewhere approaching 2,000 people have been evacuated from along the Rangitaiki River, from Edgecombe, from Teteko, and from rural communities along that river and the Whakatane River too. Much of the Bay of Plenty town just north and slightly inland from Whakatane is still underwater. The Mayor will join us live shortly. And we've spoken to people whose homes are underwater, some for a second time. But first, our reporter Zach Fleming and our cameraman Bradley White are in Edgecombe. Zach, where are you coming to us live from? John, I'm on the banks of the river, standing right next to the stop bank that collapsed and brought all of this water rushing into Edgecombe early this morning. For people who aren't familiar with Edgecombe, the stop bank is essentially just a small concrete wall that separates the river from the town. It stops all the river water flooding through. When that stop bank collapsed, that's essentially what happened. A torrent of water just came rushing into Edgecombe, and it's still happening now. I wouldn't even begin to try and guess how much water is rushing through, but I'm not sure if you can hear it. It sounds like a waterfall. If you stand right next to the stop bank, you have to yell at a person who's standing right next to you. Something that has really struck me standing here as well is the evidence of just how quickly people had to leave their homes. There are cars still in driveways, there's washing hanging on washing lines. Some people's front doors and windows are even still open. They actually had to just rush out of their home when the stop bank collapsed. Since we've been here this morning, uh, this afternoon, sorry, the town is almost completely inaccessible. Uh, you have to go around houses on boats. There are surf life saving crews and just good sorts, locals with boats, who are going around the town trying to check that everyone has uh, been evacuated properly. Just a river coming down through the main street and right across the road, it was just crazy. Yeah, rubbish tins everywhere and guys screaming around in jet boats picking people up and cars stuck and yeah, just a mess. Have you tried to help rescue anyone? Anyone need a rescuing? Uh, we've run quite a few around and said, you know, there's plenty of room at our place if they want to come and stay, but everybody seems to have been pretty well organised, they're all evacuated. Um, so yeah, it's just another thing for Edgecombe, isn't it? Yeah, you're pretty chipper about it all, mate. Well, what can you do? Yeah. yeah, you can't stop it, it's here. Yeah. I was standing on my back lawn looking, talking to the neighbours, ready to hang out at washing, and yeah, this is how we got to go. And seen it coming through our fence from behind, knock over the back fence, and where it came. Well, I mean, what was it like? Did it kind of come trickling it through? It came or? trickling through, yeah, and then it sort of knocked down the fence, and then in she come. And how much water was it? It would have been, yeah, you'd knee high within seconds. Mm. And what were you thinking at this point? Um, I saved my dogs, uh, get them inside and then get, get my kids out. And so what did you do after that? Uh, after I got all the kids out, got the dogs in, then we got rescued. So then I jumped on the old bag and went and went and helped save a few of the old ladies up the road and got them on the truck and away we went. We were just looking outside and it was just about ankle deep. We went, you know, and then it just really came through. Water was gushing through. Our neighbours and we were all getting flooded up. I was pretty out of it. First time I seen one too. My first flood. Quite a few of us got out. It was cool because they had a um, truck with a trailer and cutting the old people out, so it was massive. Everyone helped out. Hmm. What were you thinking? What was going through your mind, man? Just as uh, long as everybody's all good. Mainly, yeah. In my eyes, my family was all good, so that was all good. And all our neighbours were all good too. Because we got them all on the back of the truck. By the time you got out, how high was the water? Um, up to my guts. Up to his guts. And Zach, you are crossing to us live. We can see you standing there. For people listening, uh, it's impossible to see where the river ends and the world begins. There is just so much flooding and it is so fast moving behind you. It is just torrential and there is so much of it. So when will people even remotely be able to consider returning to their homes? The people I spoke to today weren't exactly sure. Some of them have been told that they might be able to reassess tomorrow if they're on the outskirts. Other people, two days, three days. The people in the houses behind me that are under two or so metres of water probably aren't going to be coming back to their homes 
for a pretty long time considering the stop bank is going to have to be completely repaired before they can obviously re-enter because the water's just not going to stop otherwise. Live, Zach Fleming, live from the scene. The mayor will join us shortly.